shined but I feel like tonight there was only one person that shined you <laughs> okay we have, which one it took a little interrogation we all shined. Camilla yes I think Let's we, I think you guys should all learn something from her Looks like Katy Perry might be the latest to participate, or was she? I mean, is this even a real? Allegedly seen whispering to Sam Smith, who are they? Now, while some are. Some fans criticized the girls dancing saying it wasn't in sync while others compared them to Little Mix. One Twitter user tweeted, quote, I tried to watch Fifth Harmony on Britain's Got Talent, but it was so bad I became deaf instantly. Wait, wait, wait. Stop playing,
me you Just give me you, that's all I wanna do And if what say is true If it's true, if it's true I wanna give me to you Hurry up or I'm waiting out from Like a 63, I'ma buy a new sling. Let her ride in a foreign. Take that, put in over time on the fly. She wants what she can get. I fight for the city. Yeah, we'll get all of her time on the Do my look at Should I call him back? What my head? 
It's an hour late. Um, set in stone as of right now. But question: If you could switch minds with someone in the group, who would it be and why? And that was from Seam Seamless Cabello. My favorite thing about the U. My favorite thing about the U. My favorite thing about the UK is the fashion. Damn. Yeah, Wally. Well, so Damn, uh, <laughs> 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 again. I'm sorry, it's run on. <laughs> yeah, all, all that. Compliments Thank today. You. Wow, great question. I think Aww. she's hilarious. If you get to watch <laughs> yeah. Annie, she just like has like these diff different personalities that just hit her. For me, and the Nandos. Nobody mentioned that yet. I, I, I she was, was about to. It was coming oh, out. I think I, was I think I felt that one. You felt <laughs> it. I felt it. Yeah. My favorite thing about the UK is Donando's. So good. Uh, I love it because I think every time I come here, I'm, that's like, I'm really excited. I'll get you a black card for your birthday. I want that mango juice uh, for your nose. Really I, 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 we I just didn't. learned about chicken tenders. They're called... Chicken Dijon. They're called chicken what? Dijon. Chicken Dijon. Chicken Dijon. 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 Um, oh, you could be a little cheeky. There's yeah, also something that she's using everything. JK. We can keep webbing it out if you want. Yeah, yeah we're pretty I mean, awesome. We can do a whole video about this. <laughs> we should go to the cheating. next question. Uh, yeah, let's go. Can you. So I'm not going to dress. Plus, I don't want to get it stuck in there. Uh uh, I can't. <laughs> wow! What's the biggest change from Reflection, our first album, to 727? I grew, I grew two one. inches since the last album. That's awesome. But anyway, I, as for 727, yes. what is different about it, right? Yeah. I think in Reflection we were sort of figuring out who we were and our sound 
even more so than we, when we were on X Factor. And I feel like this album now, 727. And many experiences that we came across throughout the that past year, uh, we became very hands-on into this project and we became very hands-on into this project and Question, if you could switch minds with someone and ah, better dress than I am. Was like, 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 he was like, the, like, attitude every time you're around. The whole video about this. Nice you guys. Which, I think in reflection we were sort of figuring out who, through the first album process, um, they had Our vote is so important. Obviously, we don't want Trump to be president. So, if, <laughs> so if we make, pre if but if no one is active about right. being against that, then it's gonna, it might happen because mm -hmm. you know some people think it's a good idea for whatever. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you know some people think it's a good idea for yeah. whatever. Reason. Because mm -hmm. you know some people think it's a good idea for. Yeah. You have a I do too. You me too. too. Well, me, I'm more of a dog. Shirt. I have no, two. No, watch I feel like they'll smother me. <laughs> are amazing. <laughs> I think the community yeah, makes us eat more than we eat. I know. Because uh, <laughs> like, every like two hours, we're like, 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 and costumes. That's awesome, man. I feel like costumes oh, and the props, props, really the props that are yeah, on the stage. Yeah, that's why I feel like you guys are going to... Shut up! 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 Shut up!
had any advice for someone trying to go into the music industry, like myself? Media contracts. <laughs> I know that's what, but that's three albums in less than three years. What keeps you guys going? That's a, that's a schedule that you guys are keeping. Quite. Uh, a contract? <laughs> <Just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I wish that was a joke. I knew that was coming. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I'm not. Okay, but it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's a good thing, though. Like, honestly, done... we are. We. What are some of the biggest misconceptions people have about your lives? I think that, that we're rich. Oh, yes. 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 No, no, no. yes. Everybody we, does. We are loser. Loser. Yeah. People are always like, people are always like, why are y'all sitting in the back of the room? We're, we're literally plane. more broke than we were yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, we are. Are. <laughs> like, we literally are. The other day, I posted a picture of myself at a bus stop because I actually went on a bus. And they were like, why are you at a bus stop? You don't even ride the bus. You're rich. I was like, excuse me. I can only afford the bus. Taxis are expensive. <laughs> I was so mad. Seriously. Seriously. I was so mad. Even yeah, down when it comes to eating, we have like Ritz crackers Ooh. for dinner. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> we bankrupt. Yeah, but yeah. Also, like, I know I wore something is... from Goodwill and I was like, I said, oh, I love Goodwill and all this. Like, Dana, why are you wearing cheap clothes? I'm like, because I can afford it and it's like <laughs> valuable to me. Yeah. <laughs> Star just ripped us off because they are goldfish and we are not. Oh, yikes. Even though the group didn't directly call out Fifth Harmony, fan accounts for both groups quickly wanted to get to the bottom of everything by checking out both songs and comparing. Although many fans also claim that Terror J's sound sounds a lot like 5H's work from home, though the groups don't have the same producer work from home and down were both co-written by Joshua Coleman, so maybe that's why they sound similar. Okay, okay, so let's get to the bottom of this ourselves, shall we? Let's hear a bit of Fifth Harmony's... going to be another controversial acknowledgement, but whatever. People thought Camila and I were like into each other. And that made me so uncomfortable, like disgustingly uncomfortable because I was queer, but she was not. Mm -hmm. And it made me feel like a predator, essentially. Because it's invasive. I, it made me feel like a predator because of the type of clips people would put together and the type of stories people would write and the type of stuff. I was always the aggressor and I was always the one turning her and I was always the one who was like the the masculine energy in the scenario. And it made me very uncomfortable because that's not how I identify. And that's not to say that that's wrong to identify like that. Like, daddy, get your shit. You know what I mean? Like, do your thing. But I, I did not identify that way. And I also did not have that connection with her. Camila and I were just very good friends at that time. You know what I'm saying? And we respected each other. When each other would talk, we would look at each other. We had love for each other, like genuine friendship. You know what I'm saying? And in the Latinx culture, I don't know about you, but growing up, I was very affectionate with all of my friends. I was very, yes. uh, like, we would, like, we would tell, tell each other shit that, yeah, maybe you would think we were gay if you were listening over. Yes. <laughs> but we weren't. You know what I'm saying? And, and that wasn't the interaction. So that actually made me so uncomfortable to the point where I, I to this day, hyperanalyze every connection that I have with a girl because I don't want to make them feel like I'm looking at them that way because they were there's there's to this day convinced that that was real you know what i'm saying and and i can't do anything to change it because even when i talk about it and i don't talk about it because I, i've learned to just ignore it because it was it was just so so traumatizing for me you know what i'm saying that it was like i just chose to ignore it at a certain point because getting angry to them would mean that it was real and validate it more for them so i was like okay then i can't get angry or defend myself apparently because then that just makes it more real like it just it really fucked with my head because i was just like 
I wasn't even comfortable with it, with telling my parents about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't even comfortable telling myself that I was queer, you know? And I also, I didn't see Camila that way. So it just made me uncomfortable that I could potentially be putting off that kind of vibe onto someone who I, who I wasn't trying to do that with. You feel me? Yeah. Cause that, that made me like, again, it made me feel like a predator to this day. I have mm-hmm. an issue with that because of it. Yeah. Like, I have an issue flirting with girls because I'm like, I don't want them to think that I'm trying to, inv- you know what I'm saying? Invade mm-hmm. or like anything like that. So anyway. Just another One Direction fangirl, she told Beats One Zane Lowe. You don't understand, like I had like a Twitter account for One Direction. Um, like I was like one of those fangirls at one, at one point. Her handle was reportedly Ratchet and Sassy, an account which has since been taken over by someone else. But screenshots of Cabello's tweets from the summer of 2012 show her allegedly using the N-word multiple times. Cabello also retweeted some insensitive tweets about former One Direction members Zayn Malik and his then-girlfriend Perry Edwards. One tweet implied that Malik was Hispanic, he's English, and suggested that Edwards was waiting for him at the Mexican border. Although Cabello has never confirmed that she was the one behind the controversial account, she did tweet Ratchet and Sassy in May 2013, writing, I hate you, lol. After four and a half years of being together, we've been informed via her representatives that Camila has decided to leave Fifth Harmony. Van had, quote, not gotten along in a long time. Camila never made it a secret. She planned to do her own thing eventually, and the other girls resented her for it. Apparently, strong egos were the real reason behind the split. Camila left the group because Lauren, Ali, Normani, and Dinah were jealous of her success. 2016, Cabello did not directly inform the girls that she would be leaving the group and instead communicated the message through her representatives. However, according to Cabello's official statement, she claimed to be shocked about the statement her former bandmates released about the break. She wrote, The girls were aware of my feelings through the long, much-needed conversations about the future that we had during tour. Saying that they were just informed through my representatives that I was leaving the group is simply not true. But according to some sources, she may have officially left the group a year earlier. In October 2016, a leaked contract that supposedly detailed Cabello's departure surfaced, making it appear as though Cabello had tried to leave the group in 2015. The contract, which made its rounds on Twitter, revealed that Cabello stated, Be advised that I fully intend to remain in the group, but as an individual and not as a member of the partnership. While the authenticity of the contract was never confirmed, it certainly jives with what Cabello did toward the end of her time with Fifth Harmony, behaving as a solo artist while still technically being part of the group. Cabello opened up about 
about her thoughts on fake friends, but the whole thing felt like shots fired at her former group members. She told Elle, You can think someone's your friend and it can be out of convenience. And a year later, all of a sudden they have to stand up for you and they don't have your back. It's probably no coincidence that she threw in the part about it being a year later when she was a few months out from the one-year anniversary of quitting Fifth Harmony. Granted, her former bandmates seem to think she's a fake friend as well. Camila was asked her opinion on the band's new track, to which she seemed slightly taken off guard. Check it out. Have you had that experience yet? Um, I mean, I've heard some snippets of it. I haven't had the chance to hear the whole thing yet, um, but I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So whether or always knew Taylor Swift was a snake trying to break up my girls and use Camila as her protege, Taylor was only ever friendly to Camila and ignored the other girls. She invited me to come over and she was so sweet. Taylor, my friend Taylor. Swift. <laughs> my crazy. Um, uh, she also spoke out about the way things ended up between the two parties after very public back and forth claims via social media surrounding her decision to part ways, to which she said, Obviously, I wish it wouldn't have been like that because I just, you know, peace. But like I said, I wish them the best. Revealed her collaboration with Shawn Mendes, I Know What You Did Last Summer, was the catalyst for her split from the group. Camila tells the paper after she worked with Shawn, she expressed interest in writing lyrics for 5H and was denied. According to the Times interview, Camila wanted to stay in the band while working on a solo album, but other members were not on board with this idea. Tension between Camila and the group hit a boiling point when she started working with other producers like Diplo and she was given given a final ultimatum between staying with 5H or going solo. Camila sums up the feelings that had her packing her mic and hitting the girl group exit. If anyone wants to explore their individuality, it's not right for people to tell you no. Oh my god, yeah. Camila recently revealed that she originally recorded the demo of Halsey's part, but that due to unfortunate circumstances, she had to turn it down. And so they were like, oh, do you want to be on the song? And I loved the song, but I had to turn it down because I was with the group at the time and we were like about to put an album out. Camila leaving 5H in December of 2016 was messy to say the least, and she was forced to relive the drama at the 2017 MTV VMAs. Cam says she was blindsided when Fifth Harmony used a double representing her that was yanked off the platform during their performance. This is how the Times describes Camila's reaction. Miss Cabello's eyes welled up with tears as she recalled watching it live. She had been at home in the living room with her mother it definitely hurt my feelings, she said. I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't prepared for it, especially because at that point, I'd moved on from it. I was just like, what? Why? Which I think is a really great thing to do because, of course, your Fifth Harmony fans are still there. Yeah, Absolutely. Are. And you were obviously at proud. your peak. And you were at your peak when Camila decided to leave. So talk I don't know about that. Peak what now. happened? I don't know about that. Wait yeah. for it. <laughs> well, as in you were on a high. You were on a rise. Yes. I mean, hopefully there is much yes. more to come. But tell me about that decision to keep going. Because did you ever think, actually, this is the time to call it a day? Honestly, um, you know, just the respect and love that we have for each other. And just considering how hard we've worked these last four to five years, we knew that, you know, that wasn't it. And I remember in my heart, like, we were actually really nervous. We were scared. It was definitely a hard time, especially at the top of this year. But, you know, our fans, they were so loyal. They were dedicated. They were there for us. And that time, which felt like just hell, honestly. And um, <laughs> we have each other, and we just knew that that wasn't it for us. I kept saying, I know mm -hmm. the conversation, like, we were Same. debating yes. and, and going back and forth. I think we were actually... We um, all knew. Yeah, we all knew in our hearts that there was something greater than what we had created. And honestly, I feel like we're at our peak right now. Like, we have so many great things to be blessed for. It's kind of like one thing right after the other, especially at the top of the Amen. year with People's Choice Awards. Yeah. We actually won, and it was just Winners. Radio Disney. Radio Disney. iHeartRadio Teen, Teen Choice. Choice Awards. Now we have the VMAs. VMAs. What? <laughs> it's like we're on a roll. This is the best you, part of our careers. Yeah. It's all and guys, there's fans. a great track record in the UK of big pop bands continuing when original members leave. I mean, I will point you to the Spice Girls, Take That, Westlife and Boyzone, who all went on to have huge hits in a very, very enduring, lengthy career without original members. So there is a track record that proves you can do it and right. get stronger. Yes. Absolutely. We're so excited. We have so much ahead of us and, you know. 
But at the same time, right, we've got to be honest about this. When someone leaves a group, obviously it's tough because you are like a little family and there's it's obviously always going to be difficult for everyone. And Camila has obviously been on a publicity drive herself and there was a bit of war of words initially. So what's your message about what went on then? Because she seemed to say that she'd be very, been very upfront and honest about you guys about why, with you guys about why she wanted to leave, but you guys said those conversations actually hadn't taken place. Yeah, well, right now we're really focused on each other. We're so excited in the now, and we have so much to look forward to, so that's kind of where we're at right now. And she she also said that she was uncomfortable being sexualized within the band. How difficult was that for you guys to hear? Um, well, I mean, we know how hard we've worked. We know how our choreography, you know, makes us feel and how empowered we feel when Sean gives us, you know, our choreo. And, you know, we know who we are. And then also it's kind of like hard. We have, you know, our voices, which are, incredible and kind of surpass anything else um but yeah i mean are you watching yeah we feel confident we feel comfortable mm. yeah and There's our music never is been a, a, a moment for me personally this is normani that i felt like i was neglecting myself me neither. or whoever it is that i know that i am so i feel i feel really confident and we're performers at the end of the day you know and we love being on stage and i'm pretty sure everyone kind of in the music industry, touches upon <clears throat> that sexual context, one way or another. One way or another. <laughs> These days, when you when you have a bit of a breakup on social media, you always end up unfollowing each other, which happened here. Do yeah, you think though that like, one day you guys will be able to be friends again? Because I have them for five more minutes. Like, what is this? <laughs> UK, can you guys hear me? Mm-hmm. Can I hear you? Yeah. I'm the UK, can you hear me? We want to talk about our new music. We don't want to be shady, man. Yeah, I've got them for five more minutes, so we've got to talk about music. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so what you, you I mean, is there a problem? You, you're not no, there's not a problem, but they just addressed no, we just it, and we have five minutes about. left. So if we're not going to talk about new music that comes out in 10 days, we've got to move into that. Well, of course, that's why we're doing, that's the whole reason why we're doing the interview. I mean, I could not have been more supportive with Fifth Harmony for the entire career of the band. I know, it's just a time thing. But so obviously this was a huge The rest of the questions are still going to be about something that isn't related to the new music. We're going to run out of time, and I'd like to give them the opportunity to talk about the new music. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay, what would you like to say about the new music, guys? Well, we have been working so hard. We were all doing features, everybody was experimenting and kind of spreading their wings. And at that point, I had felt like, you know, it's time for me to do the same. And I found this one song that I, I really liked. I was a fan of the song and, and I loved working with the artist. And so I was excited, but then I was told within the label that I couldn't release it. And like, you're not doing it, you're not releasing this feature not gonna let it happen and on top of that the tone that it was told to me it was like very dis disheartening the most important thing was that everybody at the time were allowed to do features this is not fair to be one spoken to this way but also told no because of a personal opinion was just to me not right so in that moment I just felt alone and I just felt like I don't understand why this is happening to me that was a moment where I kind of decided for myself that, hey, I'm not going to take this kind of talk anymore, this kind of behavior. I'm not going to let someone in power do that to me. After I got that no, I was inspired to work so much harder. Afterwards, this other feature came along called Look At Us Now. I was like, you have to let me do this. Like at this point, it's just getting ridiculous. You're not treating me fairly, to be quite honest. Oh, I felt alone. I felt afraid. I just felt like nothing would get get better. I uh, turned to wine for a really dark reason and I use it to try to escape and to numb my pain and to forget everything. Decisions on a regular basis to fuck us over, to make us literal slaves, like literally slaves.
things, Ali. We're doing fucking labor every day and we see nothing. It's a fucking bone. Like, we just like.